Saturday, October 11th, 1980, was a brisk but beautiful fall day. Midterm week at Marquette University had just concluded and the campus had a still, tranquil feel. The stillness of the day was shattered in the early evening when the roar of a bulldozer's engine was quickly followed by the sound of crashing stone and metal tearing outside the Elizabeth Plankinton mansion. As the demolition continued, a small crowd began to gather outside. Some were students filing by on their way to evening activities. Others were members from the surrounding community. After an hour, the bulldozer halted its work for the day. Several students, apparently upset about the work stoppage, picked up nearby rocks and stones and started throwing them at the mansion. Whenever a window shattered, the crowd cheered. Others began to crawl through the wreckage, piling up rocks and stones as souvenirs. One woman, while holding two stones in her hands, commented wryly, Now I have a set of plank and tin bookends. After two years of sitting on death row and multiple stays of execution, the Elizabeth Plankinton Mansion finally met its fate at the front end of a large caterpillar bulldozer, a fate foreshadowed perhaps by its ominous beginning. John Plankinton, Milwaukee's millionaire meatpacking mogul, built the Elizabeth Plankinton Mansion as a wedding gift for his daughter Elizabeth. Completed in 1888 in the Romanesque style, it featured rough stonework, asymmetrical design, conical towers, and rounded arches that characterized the architectural type. It also included prominent masonry towers with multiple round-arched openings at the top. The home was renowned for its elegantly carved fireplaces, sunken mirrors, and detailed woodwork. The first floor had a beautiful oak balustrade staircase with a corkscrew sunburst motif. The Elizabeth Plankinton Mansion joined many other mansions on Wisconsin Avenue, which at that time was called the Grand Avenue due to the number of stately mansions that graced the street. The mansions of Elizabeth's father and brother were across the street. The Pabst Mansion was a few blocks up, and the crown jewel of the avenue, the Schneiden Mansion, lay at the far west end of the avenue at the corner of 24th and Wisconsin. It was the first home in Milwaukee to have a furnace, and at 40,000 square feet and 43 rooms, it dwarfed any other mansion on the Grand Avenue. Elizabeth was 33 when the mansion was completed and had spent her life traveling the world and becoming a leading philanthropist in Milwaukee. She was engaged to a prominent British sculptor, Richard Hamilton Park, who had created the bronze George Washington statue which stands in the median in front of Milwaukee's Central Library. Three weeks before the wedding, he abandoned Elizabeth for a dancer in Minneapolis. Just as her fiancé jilted her, Elizabeth jilted the mansion. She fled Milwaukee for an extended European vacation, and in 1888, she made one visit to the home, toured the first floor, and left, never to return again. In 1896, Elizabeth sold the mansion to Margaret A. Johnston, who lived there until her death in 1904. The mansion again remained vacant until it was sold to the Knights of Columbus in 1910. The Knights used the mansion as their clubhouse until 1978. During their occupancy, the Knights remodeled extensively, so much so that in some parts of the mansion, there was little to none of the original structure left. In 1975, as part of Marquette's process to renew and unify its campus, it bought the parcel of land the Elizabeth Plankinton Mansion sat on, but the city of Milwaukee still owned the mansion. Marquette did not hide its belief that the mansion was no use to the university and expressed its continued desire to have the site cleared to make way for a new student union. This created friction with some in the community. Marquette alumni, students, and community members flooded the president's office with letters of dissent. In 1978, the preservationist group Wisconsin Heritage, which had successfully worked to save the Pabst Mansion from the wrecking ball, won an injunction in federal court to postpone demolition of the mansion, while the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development studied possible solutions to the controversy. In June of 1979, the completed study said the mansion should be preserved. However, the report did not recommend federal participation or funding in preserving the building. Instead, the report called for a review of the entire case in six months. The victory was a pariahic one for Wisconsin Heritage. No suitable buyer could be found, and in June of 1980, a federal judge dismissed Wisconsin Heritage's lawsuit and with it the injunction to prevent demolition of the mansion. The city of Milwaukee moved swiftly to hire a demolition contractor to raise the mansion. In a last-ditch effort, Wisconsin Heritage implored the Common Council to utilize a law that allowed the city to use its condemnation powers to take possession of the land beneath the mansion. Responding to the 11th hour pressure, on October 8, 1980, two Common Council committees recommended condemning the land the mansion sat on and authorizing funds to acquire the land from Marquette and bring the building up to code. The full Common Council was scheduled to consider the proposal during a meeting the next Tuesday.
the Common Council never had a chance to hear the proposal. On Friday, October 10th, the Commissioner of the Department of City Development signed the order of demolition. An investigation following the demolition discovered the mansion had been raised in violation of city ordinances. Though the application for the wrecking permits was made Friday, the permits were not issued until Monday, two days after demolition had started. According to the city building inspector, such a violation was merely a technicality. When asked why he began demolition on Saturday evening, Edward Muse, head of the demolition firm and driver of that fatal bulldozer, told reporters, My hobby is to knock buildings down. It's time someone made a decision, and we made the decision for them. You can't live in the past. This demolition is part of the future. We don't care about the vote on Tuesday. After so many twists and turns, the unclaimed, unwanted wedding present that was too big to return and too outdated to repair was finally laid to rest. A decade later, Marquette completed its new student union. But the Elizabeth Plankinton mansion did not die in vain. The controversial nature surrounding its demolition led to the creation in 1981 of the Milwaukee Historic Preservation Commission, which provides legal protection for buildings or sites that have been declared historic by the Common Council, ensuring that the price of progress doesn't come at the expense of a city's past. Mm -hmm.